Let's see what new stickers have I put up here recently. Uh, this one and and this one. Those are new. And I got this one too. Vanilla orange. Sent it to me. Got the epic array of sticker. Okay, you are probably wondering, ah shoot, probably wondering what is going on here. You're probably wondering why am I balancing or trying to balance a strip of this. Compass tire or Rene Ayers tire uh, on a horizontal bar. And uh, now this is not a scientific experiment, but I am doing this just to illustrate a point. And that is, I got a comment on a video where I posted a long time ago, I did an analysis where we looked at the difference between a 650B wheel and tire combination compared to a 700C tire and wheel combination. And what I tried to do in that video was see if we could figure out if there was a way to decide if there was a significant difference between 650B with a wide tire versus a 700C with a skinny tire. In terms of a few things, we looked at, we were really trying to look at rolling resistance to see if there was a way to determine if the two were going to have a similar rolling resistance. And we were also looking at the mass of the wheel and the inertia of the wheel to see how much difference there would be there. And the reason we would look at that is to, to determine if there would be an acceleration penalty for one of the wheels and tire combinations. So when you spin up your bike, when you take off and accelerate, you have to spin up two wheels in order to do that. And there's inertia forces that are there that have to be overcome in order to accelerate. And you might think, well, it really doesn't matter because once you accelerate and you get to a constant velocity, then, then it no longer matters, right? It's, it's in steady state and therefore there's no initial or additional forces due to inertia. Well, that's true, except for when we ride a bicycle, we get blown around in the wind. We go up small little changes in elevation. We're constantly accelerating and decelerating. Uh, and sometimes these are micro accelerations. So you're talking about, you know, when you're riding along at 17, 18, 19, 20 miles an hour, you hit a little uh, gust of wind, slows you down. You have to regain that uh, speed, so you have to accelerate back up. And so each of these little micro accelerations over time add up to additional forces on you as a rider on a bike. So what I wanted to do back then was to take a look at these different parameters and see what we could find out mathematically, uh, whether there was any difference. And then I also looked at, I was also looking at it because at that time, the whole notion of wide tire, uh, wide tires on smaller wheels wasn't, that mu wasn't talked about that much, uh, at least online. Maybe it was talked about in certain circles of the cycling community, but it wasn't like a general kind of mainstream idea. So I looked at it then because I was curious myself. Anyway, since then I've built several bikes with different wheel and tire sizes and I've gone out and run tests on the road myself. I've published those tests here. Uh, my results of riding on smooth pavement, rough pavement and that sort of thing. So now I have a pretty good sense for myself what the differences are. But uh, I still get comments once in a while on that older video. And somebody said that my analysis of my, uh, the math that I use to come up with the moment of inertia of the wheel and tire combination was um, either 
Well, we'll read the comment and we'll, we'll see what he was actually saying. But basically, he was saying that where I located the center of mass of the tire was incorrect because a good majority of the tire, and actually, let's go look at this. On the 650B wheel, you will see I have a dashed line in the center of the outside radius. That dashed line will represent the centroidal mass of the tire itself. This cross section, this is a, a 2.3 inch wide or roughly a uh, I guess this would be what a 50 57 millimeter 58 millimeters wide tire and uh, this tire is constructed with a natural rubber carcass and then it has a tread that's bonded to it that's overlaid on the carcass well the carcass rubber is natural rubber and the tread rubber is a carbon black rubber so it has a slightly different density and uh, the thickness of that area of the tire is concentrated mostly up here, right? So you have two different densities and two different thicknesses. And so in order to calculate the center of mass of this cross section, you kind of have to do a pretty complicated mathematical analysis because you have to take into consideration the, th the thickness and the density of the tread the thickness and the density of the carcass, as well as the bead uh, itself, because the bead has some mass to it, and it has a reinforcement inside the bead. And so it's a pretty complex analysis in order to determine this mathematically. You could do it like I did experimentally, uh, although this leaves some uh, a lot to be desired, because as you try to balance it here, your, your tire is not in the shape that it would be if it was inflated. So it would have a little bit more of a, like a, depending on the width of the rim, it would have a more of a, like an ice cream cone shape to it or something like that, I guess. I, that's, that's a bad description, but you get the point. It's gonna, be lar it's gonna be rounded out a little bit more and it's gonna have more of a rounded shape. But this gives you just, a, just an idea of why when I did my analysis, why I picked sort of the center of the tire as the center of mass. It's a close approximation. It's not exact, uh, but it's good enough to do basic analysis when we're doing relative comparisons. So if we're comparing this tire and rim to a skinny tire and rim, it's okay to make the same assumptions provided, or make assumptions provided the assumptions you make for both systems are the same. That way you're comparing the relative differences, not the absolute differences. The analysis that I did would not have provided absolute values anyway. There's just so much uh, assumptions in the modeling that I used and that wouldn't result in realistic numbers. So what, what you would do in that situation is you come up with a model that you think is representative of the things you're, that you're interested in looking at and then go out and test it and see how close your test data is to your analytical data or analytical model that's what i was approach that's how i approached it neither of the two situations are exactly right because even in a test scenario you have outside variables affecting it and with the analytical model you have lots of assumptions that you're making so neither two are exact but they both have information there that you can use to sort of figure out what might be going on. It gives you kind of a look from both sides. So anyway, uh, that's what this video is today. This was just a response to that comment. It was a good comment, and I thank everyone that's interested in these uh, kind of nerdy math-related uh, cycling videos. If you're, you know, it's nice to see people are still interested in those older videos that I made and I enjoy the comments on them and uh, I enjoy kind of looking at it in a little bit different, you know, taking a, an example like this and just illustrating what, uh, what you have to do if you want to simplify uh, some analysis so you can actually figure it out. You know, you can, take, you can take things very, very far and go way off into, you know, into high level mathematics and uh, you know you can get lost out there and the question then is you know how much more information are you gaining by doing that 
Uh, and so I feel like there's a point of where, you know, simple models come up with some using simple mathematics and then go to test it and then see how you're good, how you're doing. And then if it's interesting and you want to go and further develop your model, your mathematical models, then by all means do it. So anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and we will see you hopefully in the next one soon.